Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a video on a rare Tarzan the Epic Adventures card set. So this is a set of 10 cards, and this came in like a clear pack. I got this off of eBay, obviously. This is from the 90s. And so we're going to take a look at what's in the, this card set. This goes over the Tarzan push of the 90s. It's not just a TV show or the toys, but all of the merchandise and how, you know, it was all part of that one big push. And so this was probably made, I would guess, for retailers back then. But as I read it, you can probably, you know, draw your own conclusions. But it, it's definitely not for your average consumer. These were made to pitch the brand and pitch the merchandise. And so since this is, you know, 2022 and we're looking back on something that was done in the 90s, this basically becomes a historical document, right? We're going to learn about, you know, what was said back then about this push and uh, it's going to clarify and confirm some things that I've suspected for a long time. And, you know, I actually learned a few things here and there I didn't know as well. And so I am going to read these cards to you. You're going to get a chance to find out what is in the text. Um, now, I apologize. I am not a very natural reader as far as reading things out loud. And so I'll probably be a little bit awkward at times. And I may mispronounce some things here and there. Um, so I apologize in advance, but if you still want to leave comments below complaining about that, feel free because it'll help with my YouTube algorithms. All right, let's get going. All right, card number one says, Welcome. Welcome to the exciting world of Tarzan. From his first published appearance in 1912, Tarzan has established himself as one of the world's most popular characters. Sprung from the fertile imagination of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan is now one of the five most recognized names in the world. Tarzan has been in and out of the limelight for over eight decades with successful resurgences in media such as movies, television, novels, animation, and comics. Now the Lord of the Jungle is back with a vengeance. The 90s marks a resurgence in the popularity of Tarzan with successful new licenses in arenas such as toys and trading cards. Tarzan will be a major media presence in the next few years with numerous high-profile productions in the works, including a spectacular new action fantasy series, Tarzan the Epic Adventure, slated for the fall of 96. The strength of the Tarzan licenses, along with the cooperation of various production companies and the high standards of Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated, ensure that Tarzan will remain popular for years to come. And so what stands out to me on this first card is that Tarzan is one of the five most recognizable characters in the world. And so this card was put out in 1995. And so things may be a little different now, but I suspect he's still up there because Tarzan as a concept is very well known. You know, people know if it's a guy in a loincloth in the jungle and he yells a certain way, that's Tarzan. So just that name recognition alone can really help, you know, with marketing and merchandising of a character. And so the second card is this wonderful image of Joe Lara as Tarzan with a giraffe. And so in order to read it, I'm gonna to have to turn it this way, so you'll have to excuse me. The card is titled The Series, and it says, the king of the jungle will soon be conquering television screens across the world. Look for Tarzan, the epic adventures on television in the fall of 96. The new one-hour live-action slash fantasy television series from Keller Siegel Entertainment and SDI Productions stars Joe Lara as Tarzan. Production is currently underway at Disney MGM Studios near Orlando. Tarzan, the epic adventures will kick off with a two-hour television movie and will be based on the original Edgar Rice Burroughs novels. While the series will include many of the Burroughs characters from the 24 original novels, new adventures and storylines will be developed. The action-slash-fantasy series will follow the exploits of Tarzan to lost civilizations, ancient worlds, and a universe of adventures. Specialized in one-hour action-slash-adventure entertainment designed for the entire family, Keller Siegel Entertainment is a joint venture between 
Keller Entertainment Group, headed by Max and Micheline Keller, and Siegel Entertainment, headed by Henry and Paul Siegel. All right, interesting things in this card. First of all, I finally know where the pilot was shot at for Tarzan the Epic Adventures. Apparently, it was in the MGM Studios near Orlando, and that makes a ton of sense if you look at that episode. It does look like it was shot at a studio, and that's not a bad thing. That first episode is still amazing. It adapts the return of Tarzan, and the entire Tarzan the Epic Adventure series is available on Tubi, and I highly recommend watching it. It's free. It's wonderful. Um, now, it's also interesting the way they describe the series. It's a little bit different than I think they would have described it later because they say he's going to go to Lost Civilizations, which he does in the series. There's quite a few of those. Um, ancient Worlds and ha a universe of adventure. Now, the only ancient world he goes to is Pellucidar at the Earth's core. And as far as the universe of adventures, uh, he only goes to one other planet in the entire series. So this goes to my theory about the pilot. So the pilot was a two-hour movie, two, two-parter, and it had a portal in it, very similar to kind of uh, Stargate or something like that. And they used it to get to Pellucidar at the Earth's core. Now, after the pilot, this portal never appears again. But the pilot definitely indicated that it would be a factor throughout the series. So I think the original plan for the series was to have this portal go to other worlds created by Edgar Rice Burroughs. I've actually done an entire uh, video about why I think that and about, about this theory. But I think it would make a lot of sense because, for instance, you can see over my shoulder, they made figures of Mars in the toy line we'll talk about in a minute. And Mars never appeared on the television series, so it really doesn't make any sense why they would have made all these toys of something that was never plugged in the media. But um, they did decide to go in a different direction when they made the actual series itself. You know, they came back for the third episode and started making it on a regular basis. And I think it was actually better off. They decided to make all the adventures happen in Africa. And, you know, they focused on jungle adventure and magic and adaptions of the novels and lost civilizations and stuff like that. And I think it was a better choice than setting it on other planets because um, other planets kind of strained the budget of what they could do in a first season syndicated series. All right, so the next card shows Joe Laura as Tarzan, and it is entitled Joe Laura. The card says, The new Tarzan of the 90s is Joe Laura. Chosen from among 300 Tarzan hopefuls, he will star in the one-hour live-action slash fantasy series Tarzan the Epic Adventures. The new series isn't Joe's first stint as Tarzan. He also portrayed the Lord of the Jungle in the 1989 CBS TV movie Tarzan in Manhattan. Joe Lara grew up near the beaches of California, swimming, surfing, and playing beach volleyball. After high school, Joe moved to Europe, living in Paris, Italy, and Switzerland. Returning to the U.S., he enrolled in drama classes in Los Angeles, where he decided on an acting career. To finance his studies, he worked as a photographer's assistant and then became an apprentice photographer. To this day, Joe pursues his artistic avocation. With Tarzan the Epic Adventure, Joe retains his reign as the 18th Tarzan in film and television. The Elite Club started with Elmo Lincoln in 1918 and includes such notable actors as Buster Crabb, Johnny Westmuller, Ron Eli, and Christopher Lambert. Um, I don't really have much to add to this card other than I'm not sure why Buster Crab was listed before Johnny Westmuller, but hey, it's cool. And so this next card has this glorious painting by Joe Jesco, and this is an image from uh, Tarzan in the Forbidden City, and it's part of the Joe Jesco card sets that came out in the 90s. And so this card is entitled The Art of Tarzan. No character exemplifies the human form better than Tarzan, and no character has been rendered by a better group of artists. Look at the best work of many of fantasy art's greatest names, and most are sure to include images of Tarzan. Classical fantasy artists such as Roy Crinkle and J. Allen St. John define Tarzan for many early readers of Burroughs' work. The master of fantasy, 
Frank Frazetta is remembered by millions of fans for his stunning Tarzan book covers. Immensely popular fantasy artist Boris Vallejo also created images for books and calendars that will be remembered by Tarzan fans forever. In the Tarzan Daily and Sunday comic strips, Bern Hogarth set an illustration standard that stands to this day. High quality Tarzan art is still being produced today. Joe Jesco, one of the top fantasy artists of the last decade, recent com recently completed over 120 new Burroughs pieces, the greatest volume ever by one artist. These images awakened a whole new generation of fans to Tarzan and the fantastic worlds of Burroughs. And so this card is referring to the Joe Jesco card sets that came out in the 90s. And so one of them was devoted to Tarzan and the other uh, was mainly focused on Burroughs' other works. And they are absolutely glorious. I mean, he really did kind of touch on a lot of different works by Burroughs, everything from Venus to Mars to other works that he did, including The Land of Time Forgot, if you can believe it. Just really, really cool stuff. And if you would like to see those 120 pieces that he did for the card set bigger, Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated has this book on their website. And unfortunately, it's, it's soft bound. So it's not an art book that you can just lay down, but it is absolutely glorious. It shows the artwork much, much bigger than the card set. And it just, it's absolutely beautiful. And I definitely recommend it if you're a Joe Jesco fan. Speaking of Joe Jesco, the next card also has a glorious painting by Joe Jesco that's also part of his card sets from the 90s. This is titled Origin of Tarzan, and it reads, His real parents, Lord and Lady Greystoke, are marooned on the West African coast in 1888 following a mutiny aboard their chartered ship, the Fualda. Lady Alice is pregnant with their first child, so her husband builds a small cabin to shelter them while they wait for rescue but rescue never comes. She gives birth to a son and dies a year later, leaving the wailing infant in the care of his grief-stricken father. The apes of Kerchak invade the cabin and kill Lord Greystoke, but before they can kill the infant, it is rescued by a young female ape named Kala, who has lost her own baby in a forest accident and responds to the cry of the living child. She raises him as her own, calling him Tarzan, which means white skin. He becomes a wild ape by training, but with the native intelligence of a noble bloodline, he teaches himself to read by association of ideas and grows to, into a powerful and fearless hero with the best qualities of both beast and man. And don't really have a whole lot to add to that. It's a good summary of the origin, but I definitely recommend picking up Tarzan of the Apes, uh, either the novel or the many, many uh, comic book adaptions of it. So the next card has artwork by Jeffrey Jones, and this was eventually printed in a 1998 calendar of Edgar Rice Burroughs art that he did. And the card is entitled Edgar Rice Burroughs, and it reads, Born on September 1st, 1875, Edgar Rice Burroughs led a life that was as adventurous as any that he could create in his stories. From his enlistment in the 7th U.S. Cavalry to his stint in 1942, as America's oldest war correspondent, Burroughs' life was the stuff of legends. His myriad of careers included cowboy, shopkeeper, railroad policeman, gold miner, expert accountant, which is in quotation marks, and, of course, best-selling author. After selling Under the Moons of Mars to All Story Magazine for the huge sum of $400, he tried other genre until he arrived at his most famous novel, Tarzan of the Apes, which was a hit in All Story magazine as well as a bestseller from A.C. McClure and Company. Burroughs' works have appeared worldwide in books, newspapers, strips, comic books, and on radio, TV, and film. Most modern science fiction writing can, in part, be traced back to the works of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Famed writers such as Ray Bradbury credit Burroughs with inspiring the creation of many of their creatures and worlds. It can be said that the stories of Edgar Rice Burroughs are the foundation 
upon which the rich tradition of 20th century science fiction literature is built. Um, the only thing I would add to that is that I think it goes beyond science fiction. I think, you know, if you just look at adventure and jungle adventure and just, you know, a lot of our pop culture action suspense kind of storytelling, you're going to see a lot of the techniques and tropes that Burroughs use. So I think it goes beyond science fiction, though. Yes, he did have a tremendous, tremendous influence on science fiction. And so the next card has artwork by J. Allen St. John, and it is entitled Tarzan in Media, and it reads, Few characters have had the exposure in media that Tarzan has enjoyed. Originally written as fictional stories by Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan is the most successful adventure series of all time. There have been hundreds of millions of Tarzan books published in 32 languages, including Braille. The Lord of the Jungle has been the focus of numerous highly successful productions, including radio shows, comic strips, trading cards, a Saturday morning animated series, and comic books. In 1918, the first Tarzan movie was screened, starring Elmo Lincoln in the title role. The film opened on Broadway to record audiences and one of was one of the first to gross over a million dollars. Since then, top studios such as MGM, RKO, and Warner Brothers have revived the Tarzan character for dozens of successful releases. To date, Tarzan has been the subject of nearly 50 films and 75 one-hour television episodes. The future couldn't be brighter for Tarzan with new releases of the novels, a spectacular new television series, set for fall of 96, new motion pictures planned, and a full-length animated feature from Disney in the works, The King of Jungle, is sure the reign for years to come. And so you'll notice that this is 1995, and they're already mentioning the Disney film that would come out in 1999. So yeah, films take a long time. And when it talks about new motion pictures planned, most likely it's talking about uh, Tarzan and the Lost City, which was released in 1998, starring Casper Van Dien, who, of course, played Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat and Johnny Rico in Starship Troopers. Uh, that was just a one-shot movie. It never had a sequel or anything. I don't recall it having a lot of fanfare when it was released either. And so the next card finally gets around to talking about the Tarzan the Epic Adventures toy line. Um, and we can see a variety of different figures that they have. This is 5.5 inch. This is the uh, smaller uh, four inch mini figures. This is your mini play sets that were the size of like Mighty Max and Polly Pocket. And then this is your giant figures. Um, and so the card is titled Trend Masters and it reads, Trend Masters Incorporated will introduce this fabulous new Tarzan the Epic Adventure toy line with many different characters and playsets at the New York Toy Fair in February 1996. The remarkable new toy line is based on the 24 original Tarzan novels written by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan travels to fantasy worlds and ancient civilizations filled with villains, monsters, and an array of powerful and beautiful women. With the introduction of Tarzan the Epic Adventures toy line to the market, Trend Masters has reestablished the entire image of the classic action hero into a 90s superhero. Trend Masters Electronic Adventure Computer Disc is a modern form of a comic book and trading card that allows the user to accompany Tarzan on his travels and adventures. The disc contains stories, statistics, and sound and show the user who the good guys are, who the bad guys are, and the strengths and weaknesses of each character. Current plans include not only various Tarzan figures, but also supporting heroes and villains from many of Edgar Rice Burroughs' worlds. And so obviously this card was just made to torture me by describing what was on these computer disks that I've never been able to get to work. Um, these computer disks, uh, you can get a disk reader for them, but unfortunately they require an older operating system, Windows 3.1, to work. And unfortunately, I've just never been able to get them to work on a modern computer. 
Um, I'm still dying to know what is on these discs. But yeah, this was a really cool line of toys back in the 90s. And so in the background, you can see some of the Mars figures, including John Carter and Taurus Tarkas. You can see the big Tarzan figure over there. That's all from the same line. I've done a lot of reviews of most of the figures in the Tarzan the Epic Adventures line. And I do agree with the card. They were fabulous. And you can look all of those up on my channel. And some of the figures even had sound. And so this next card shows us this sculpture, which we're about to learn about. It's entitled Tarzan Licensees. And it reads, Tarzan is well represented by many high quality licensees. A sampling of these that are or will be producing Tarzan related products include graffiti designs, license holders for Tarzan sculptures, this, the collaborative effort of creative designer and Tarzan illustrator Bern Hogarth with the sculpting talents of Joe DeVito create the ultimate 3D visualization of the Lord of the Jungle. And that's what you're seeing on the card. Dark Horse Comics, publishers of new Tarzan pulps and comics, including the anticipated Tarzan vs. Predator series. Delray Books, Look for exciting new Tarzan books along with reissues of the classic Burroughs novels, which will include all new cover artwork and a major promotional campaign. Tiger Electronics, expect exciting new products from the license holder for LCD games and audio recordings and playback devices. Talbot Associates, license holder for soft body Tarzan dolls. Okay, so to break that down, this statue is actually still available from Graffiti Designs to this day. You can buy it for $300, just putting that out there. Um, as far as the others go, the only one I am not familiar with is Talbot Associates and the soft body Tarzan dolls that were allegedly going to come out in the 90s. I couldn't find anything about that. If anybody knows anything about that, let me know, but I don't know if that ever happened. As far as Delray books go, they put out these two-in-one reprints of the Burroughs novels, and these were really great if you were just trying to read the novels on the cheap. Obviously, uh, you know, I'd recommend hardcover if you got that type of money, but, you know, these were good on a budget, right, when I was a teenager. Um, and they made it all the way to Tarzan and the City of Gold, I think. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's the latest one I could find. As far as Dark Horse Comics go, uh, these cards came out in 1995. So in 95, they had already got the Tarzan license and had put out the one-shot Tarzan Atela Mugambi, which was with some leftover stuff from Malibu Simic. And then they also printed the novel uh, in four parts, Tarzan the Lost Adventure, which was Joe R. Lansdale completing a Edgar Rice Burroughs fragment of a novel he never completed. Um, now by 96, we're talking January 96, we did indeed get Tarzan versus Predator, my first exposure to Tarzan. And at the same time, we also got Tarzan and John Carter, Warlords of Mars. Uh, both from Dark Horse Comics in January 96. And by July 1996, we finally had the first ongoing Tarzan series since the late 70s from Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Dark Horse would publish Tarzan regularly up until 99, I believe it was, or 2000. But anyway, it, it stopped and it's been like, there have been no regular Tarzan comics for 22 years. There have been like one a one-shot and stuff and like crossovers with other characters for a miniseries, but no regulars. As far as Tiger Electronics go, they did definitely eventually put out some handheld games based on Disney Tarzan. However, I did also find this image of another Tarzan LCD game from Tar Tiger Electronics from someone who was trying to buy it on uh, Reddit and he was he was looking for it and I can't find any confirmation that this one actually came out I don't have any information about it um, if anyone knows anything if this thing actually exists I'd love to own it <laughs> all right 
So this is the final card, and it shows both Joe Jesco card sets as well as larger versions of the cards that came out. And it is entitled FPG, and it says, as exclusive license holder for trading cards, stickers, collectible card games, and calendars, FPG has made a long-term commitment to Edgar Rice Burroughs properties. FPG commissioned the number one trading card artist in the world, Joe Jesco, to do 120 new paintings of the works of Edgar Rice Burroughs for their trading card series. The first series, highlighting Tarzan, gained extensive coverage in the industry and is considered by many to be one of the finest trading card collections ever made. Series 2 lived up to the first's high standards. So popular were these two series that FPG reproduced the best of both collections into a series of colossal cards. FPG will guarantee that the rich fantasy art lineage that surrounds Burroughs' worlds will continue by commissioning the top fantasy artists in the world to create exciting new Burroughs masterpieces. Look for FPG to be a vital part of Burroughs' worlds with numerous calendars, training cards, card games, and sticker collections planned well into the next century. FPG will be releasing card products that tie in with all motion pictures and television releases of Burroughs properties, including the new Tarzan the Epic Adventure series. All right, so first of all, boy, that's some high hype for Joe Jesco, isn't it? Um, he came off of painting Marvel cards. He did a, a card set for Marvel that was really, really well received. And he'd actually never done Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff before that card set for Tarzan. And it's, it's amazing to me like to think like there's ever been a point in human history where there's not been like Joe Jesco Tarzan. But, you know, it, it started in the 90s with that stuff. And that is very, very high hype to say he was the top trading card artist in the world. And that that was considered by me to be the best trading card collection ever done. But I'm not the one to disagree. I, 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 I can't think of anyone better. Now, as far as the other stuff that FPG said that they were going to do well into the next century, uh, maybe not. Uh, so FPG put out these card sets and that calendar that I mentioned and the card set that I've been reading to you, the 10, 10 card promotional set, and that's it. Um, and, you know, sometimes things just fall through. I think there were a lot of plans for what was going to happen with the property in 1995 that unfortunately by the year 2000 changed. And so what happened to this big push in the 90s? So as confirmed by the card set, everything evolved around that TV series. And it was successful enough that they were planning on doing a second season and they had recast Tarzan and they had cast a new Jane for the season and they were ready to go. And then Siegel Entertainment that filed bankruptcy and unfortunately took the series with it. And without the series to support everything else, everything else, I mean, I can't tell you individually what happened to each of these different components, but I can tell you that they promptly stopped within the next year or two. Um, the comics would, again, continue for a few more years, but then they would stop too. And, of course, Disney would eventually put out its version of Tarzan in 99, and there would be some merchandising off of that. But beyond that, you know, Tarzan has been largely absent from store shelves for almost a couple decades at this point. And that's kind of sad, you know, because the world's changed, and you no longer need to put out a TV series or a movie or whatever to get your stuff on store shelves, right? You can get Funko Pops and reaction figures and all this stuff just by simply existing, being a brand that people recognize. And hopefully someday, you know, we'll be able to get Tarzan back in comic book stores and in Walmart and Target and various other places that people shop. But until then, at least we have our memories of the big Tarzan push of the 90s. And so if you made it through this video, thank you. I hope you learned something. I certainly learned something. And I think it's just interesting to hear from the folks who are doing 
the work at the time, you know, and learn about what they were doing and what they had planned because we can all speculate and we can guess and we can go on fuzzy memory. But sometimes just having documentation from the time is just so important, you know, because this is history, right? All right, I've got a ton more Edgar Rice Burroughs and Tarzan stuff coming up in future videos. So like and subscribe for more videos. And until next time, see ya.